Hello and welcome to episode 11 of uh, Hanging On By A Thread podcast. My name is Silje. Um, I'm the host of this uh, show, if you want to call it that. Um, and yeah, if you want to find me on uh, Instagram or Ravel- Ravelry, don't know why that word is so hard to say. My nickname there is Silmoa. So you can look me up and add me to your friends. And uh, yeah, uh, welcome. If you're a returning viewer is what they say. No, I can't say that. Well, it just feels so stilted. Well, welcome back if you've been here before and watched any of my episodes. Welcome back. I really appreciate it. It's so much fun to know that I'm actually talking to somebody and not just shooting this content out there with the with nobody to watch it. So yeah, Uh, this is a knitting podcast mainly, although lately I have been heavily into the crochet thing, which is uh, happening again this episode. Um, So yeah, if you're a new year, don't be shy. Uh, If by the end of the next 10 minutes you think I'm completely daft, you just just go watch something else. And if you do think I'm kind of charming and disar- uh, disarming or whatever, then, um, you know, click subscribe and hit like, make comments so I know who's out there. That would be a lot of fun. Okay, I think I got everything in the introduction this time. No. Ah, anything I mention in this episode will be in the description box below. And also, eventually, I'm usually a day or two late on posting my blog notes. Um, It will be on my blog, which is byathreadblog.com. Okay, that's it. That's it. Hi, welcome. It's been a crazy week. It's been... It's always a crazy week and nothing happens. That's... (laughs) That's the... That's the... Thing. With this pandemic, I feel. We're all stuck in, well, not everybody. Most of us are stuck in our houses and not much to do. I was looking forward to spring arriving, but spring got cancelled. Yeah. Today is gorgeous, though. I should go out for a walk after recording this, but I just wanted to make sure I did the recording first. We were... There were winds, basically. The week before, it was heavily snowing. This week, there were like storm winds, so it felt like the house was rattling. Anyways, that seems to have passed now, and it's a gorgeous day outside. Uh, Blue skies, dirty snow. Typical pre-spring weather. Okay, let's get into the knitting bit. As you can see, there is something very interesting going on here. Um, This is my... Ernst cardigan by Marie Wallen and I finally 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 put buttons in. This has been three years in the making. Um, I'm pretty sure it's three years because I bought the yarn before even moving back to Norway. So I ordered it, uh, all the yarns for this, uh, it's Jameson's of Shetland Spindrift. I ordered it and sent it to my mother, uh, my parents' house uh, before we moved. And I had it waiting for me and it was going to be my Welcome to Norway project. And I... It's just 11 color col- Fair Isle f- color work. It is... I just I just went with the, the colors in the, in the pattern, which... I'm gonna find the pattern because I do have the book. I'm I'm so ill prepared. Just hold on. See, let's knit this out. Yeah. So this is a pattern from Marie Wallen's Shetland uh, book. It is ah, it's, it just has so many gorgeous patterns. But I completely fell in love with this. This one, and I wanted to make the exact same colorways, and it's just also being eleven color 
color work, it is kind of a risk to take. Um, if you've never done that many colors before, it's it's kind of risky to start changing out all of the the colorways because they have to harmonize in a sense, right? And since the professional designer already have swatched and decided upon these this palette, I just trusted that 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 would work. Sorry, that was the book going to the floor. That was probably a bonk. Anyways, um, yeah, as with everything, it takes me a while to do these things. This kind of, I love all over color work uh, on small needles and intricate patterns, but it does mean that it, I, I'm not, I don't finish them fast. So of course this took me three years. Not the knitting itself. If we're counting like, if I was just to, count the time I was knitting, it wouldn't be very long at all because it's so addictive to go one more row, one more row. And this is like stripes with a different pattern every time. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, what takes me so long, I think is that I get to certain points in the knitting and it's too hard for my head at that moment and I put it away. So that happened at least twice with this cardigan. And the last time, um, the last hiatus it had was when it was time to do the sleeve caps and the sticking of them because this in the pattern is knit flat, which with so many colors and kind of low contrast on them, sometimes I was just like, I. I I cannot learn how to knit uh, color work flat uh, with this pattern. I think I'm gonna save that for a two color <laughs> color work. So I decided to knit it around and stick it, which uh, required me reading the full pattern thoroughly and uh, writing notes on when to do a couple of stitches or cast off a couple of stitches here for the armhole and do a new stick and stuff but it turned out really well uh, I did make a mistake on the one of the sleeve caps at some point I, I just knitted too long or something so I had to pull back and redo one sleeve cap and I was super scared of cutting the sleeve caps because I the body I did manage to do and I felt quite comfort uh, confident that the, the neckline and the holes for the sleeves on the body were correct. What jarred my brain was the sleeve caps on the arms because I also knitted them um, in the round. But it turned out okay. Um, I just left them all, it, it, all the pieces were knitted and I just had to cut the sticks and sew them up basically, and it was left like that for the longest time. I finally did that, <laughs> I think, last summer, possibly. So I did that, I sewed it up, I was super pleased, it did work. As you can see, the, the, the satin sleeve looks just so good, and it fits. It's a bit of puckering going on here. So it's not perfect, but it's the first time I ever did a satin sleeve. And I'm proud of myself for having done it on a all over color work sweater that I did stick. So pretty pleased with that. And, and I can feel it now. This is the f actually, this is the first time I'm wearing this today because after having sewn in the sleeves, picked up and done the button bands and the neckline, I didn't have any buttons to sew in. So it's actually been sitting for well over six months waiting for buttons. These buttons I did buy summer to summer as well and I just didn't sew them up. So I decided I'm a little short on... Uh, I, I don't have any new fun cast ons to talk about so I at least can show a finished object because it's finally finished. So this is... Um, my used cardigan, finally with buttons on. It's been um, it's been lightly blocked. I have kind of just pressed it with my steam iron 
to make it bloom. I, I'm not gonna wash this. I don't think it's necessary. The the Chatelain wool is so... I don't find that it has a lot of spin oil, but I don't know. Um, we'll see. At some point I might soak and wash it, but not now. I'm just too pleased. I, I want to wear it now. I can't wait for it to dry, so... Uh, and the instructions in uh, Marie Wallen's book says to just steam press it. Um, yeah, very pleased. I should stand up a little bit maybe so you can see how it looks across here. I don't know. See, it's... Again, I... It's straight in the body, so it doesn't have a lot of... It doesn't have any shaping. And the important bit is that it goes around the bust, right? That it doesn't end up being the problem of the big chest that you have a big gap like that. So, I think this is pretty good. Um... What else can I say about this? Let me check. I think I I am wearing size what they call medium. So but I can see like the medium size uses about the same amount of yarn as the size large. And I did uh have to buy an extra ball or two of certain colors anyways. So like, I am pretty sure I had to buy a bit more of the the green, but like very little, I no, the brown, the dark brown you can see here, um, which was Wren, was it? Yeah. And I, It called for two balls, but I needed a little bit more than two balls of yarn. That, that might be down to me uh, wasting bits of like how to... Uh, well, I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know. Well, um, the inside is not very impressive. I reinforced uh, this uh, sticks with the crochet stitch. I hadn't done that before and I did... Oh, actually here I can show you that. These are raw I just I didn't decide on having to put a, a band to make it a little prettier. So I'd never... This is this was a lot of firsts for me in this one. I hadn't done reinforced steaks uh, with crochet stitch before and the one side I... I think I just... I, I crocheted so I did a crochet stitch, whereas I should have done a slip stitch. So, oh, you can see here. Here is the crochet stitch. That looks rather bulky and it, and it feels bulky. On this side I had discovered my mistake and I have crocheted a slip stitch in each stitch all the way. And it lays a lot, it's, it's a lot flatter. Anyways, these are pretty ugly edges and I think I might put on um, a ribbon or something like something like that on the back side of the button band just to make it a bit more stable I don't know if I have enough of this let's see and it's the same thing happening in the with the sticks in the sleeves but it's not too bulky although they're quite tight that can also come down to the fact that I am about eight kilos heavier than when I <laughs> measured to to do the sweater, which says this is good. It's got a bit of bandwidth here, but I I definitely feel like the arms are quite snug. You know, it is giving me a lot of room uh, across the chest and the waist is fine. Uh, the arms are a bit snug, and because of the color. Because of the pattern repeats, um, they're a little short, but as I said, I tend to make them short anyways. Although I think I would have liked to have a little bit more length on these. Uh, which I recommend adding another repeat on the bottom, not on top. 
because if I were to add more length here, this would match up. Like the pattern up here would match up and I think that's more important. So you could add one of the, depending on how much length you need to add on the sleeve, you could either add one of the fatter repeats or maybe just a couple of those. There's a couple of repeats here, like there's five rounds of very small pattern. So yeah, I might do these on the inside. I think I have enough length for that. So yeah, um, Uns Guardian by Marie Wallen in uh, 11 shades of of uh, Jameson's of Shetland Spindrift yarn. I think it's 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, yes. And yeah, the, <laughs> the color work patterns are so insane when you look at them because of the symbols, but I do think it would be completely impossible uh, or equally bad to read this uh, if it was a colored chart. Uh, so Mary Wallen uses um, different symbols instead of colors uh, in her chart, which I think is a lot better. I mean, you're, you're not dependent on being able to see the colors. That, that's one thing, because the print might dif be be different and, and hard to see and yeah so um very cool very happy with that um okay next up i guess should be what have i been working on this week i'm trying to make this episode maybe a little shorter because i see that if I blather on and it becomes more than an hour, who's gonna wanna watch that? So let's try to keep it below an hour for this one. Yeah, okay. Let me see. Coffee. So I think last week I had swatched and maybe cast on a bit of st a strip of this um, cardigan. This is the Lockdown Cardigan by Theodora Goes Wild and I am almost done. It's ridiculous. I almost, I was almost thinking that I might have have it finished and be wearing it but I think for next week <laughs> most definitely we'll be wearing this um, this cardigan. So sorry I gotta drink this while it's warm you know. Um so, this is a crochet cardigan in lots of different yarns and I am making a massive beast of a thing. So, this is pretty cool. So basically, what I've, I've made, it's like two long scarves of, um, of different stitches and different colors depending on what you want, obviously. Let's see if, oh, it's hard. It's, it's, there, blow, there she blows. Okay. <laughs> so the col the colors are a lot darker than they show here, but at least you can see the different yarns and the stitches better in this blown out version. Um, so yeah, I, so you do too long, I won't say scarves because they're the kind of the length of scarves. You cast on like a hundred and eighty stitches, and you go, and you make, and you make a long scarf thing, which you fold over, and I have you can crochet together or seam as I've done, and you seam together up to like an armhole, leave enough for an armhole there. And you do that on both, and then you seam up the back, and voila, you have a sweater, basically, you have, yeah, a cardigan. And then I have gotten as far as I picked up along the front edge and did um, the, 
the color. So in the back it looks like that. So it's symmetrical. And and yeah, it's got bubbles and lovely things. And I did manage to use quite a lot. This is heavy, huh? This is uh, mostly alpaca and it's quite heavy. I I'm not going to put it on because it looks kind of I don't know. It doesn't look fantastic. But um I suspect this is going to relax a lot uh, when I, I'm going to give this a good soak and a proper block. So I think it's going to relax a lot and, and, and become just really nice and wearable. So I've just started to pick, around, pick up around this one sleeve and I'm going to, I think there's like this much of a sleeve going on. And then there's going to be pockets as well at the bottom. So this was really addictive and I think I managed to, I, I did not fuck up my neck. I got a little stiff on my hand, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it was very popcorn-y, <laughs> popcorn crochet, I guess. The only thing I'm thinking I'm not so chuffed with is my bubbles because it has the most glorious bubbles on, um, on this and I think the bubbles are best worked in the the fattest yarn of your selection not like me I just went for I wanted this kind of dark green color for them I don't know where are the bubbles there see you can't even see the bubbles this bubble here I wanted them to be this like lovely mossy green um, but yeah so this is like a black yarn held a sports weight alpaca black yarn held with uh, two strands of silk mohair but that was not chunky enough to get that chunky bubble effect because I think the original uh, design is worked with um, drops of Alaska I think for the bubbles and that's a really that's kind of a bulky yarn I didn't I tried to match up the best I could and I actually did find some boucle yarn as well for some stripes, you see the grey boucle here. I hate boucle yarn. It looks cozy and I hate working with it. It's just, I can't see my stitches. So like, after I did the boucle, <laughs> one boucle row, I'm just kind of guessing where my stitches are. And I'm just like, okay, I think my hook should go there. And who knows if I have the same amount of stitches after that row or not. But it, kind of, it seemed up quite well, it matched up decent enough and um, I didn't have enough of the the black alpaca fuzz yarn I wanted for the uh, collar so I have three rows of the black fuzzy one and then I have um, a worsted weight single ply merino a green one held with a mohair for the edge there and I think that looks pretty good. So that's my finished collar edge. <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased. It's it's a mass of texture, this, and it's a bit unshapely and and it doesn't look like anything yet, really. Uh, very hard to show on camera. But hopefully I will have this be a stunning crochet cardigan by uh, next week um, so yeah I thoroughly recommend this pattern though it is a lot of fun um, yeah it is the lockdown cardigan by Theodora Goes Wild check it out second project I worked on no surprise it's my fullest nude and I haven't made a huge amount of progress on it Can you hear the guitar in the background? Yeah. My my boyfriend's down. Boyfriend, partner. It seems weird to say boyfriend about somebody you've been with for 13 years. So, yeah. Okay. Anyways, he is downstairs in his room playing guitar. I don't know if that gets picked up by the mic or not. Um, so, 
Editing will show. Full of nude. Uh, I talked about it uh, last time as well. I I moved my progress keeper so I know how much I did since last time and it's not that much. So I've done one repeat since the last time I showed this and it is still a very soothing net. I'm not tired of it yet. I just, you know what, when you start this podcasting thing you kind of feel like you should show something new every time and it I mean you start adding pressure on yourself from making things but I'm trying to manage this and make it sure that the pressure to make things becomes more of finishing the things I've started than the pressure to constantly show new things so um that is why I haven't had any new cast on either I have lots of plans. I, I'm sure many of you out there have lots of plans all the time and it's just so hard to keep fo focused sometimes on what you're actually working on and not go like, boom, cast on the next thing. I have that problem, especially when scrolling Instagram. So if I don't want to get distracted and uh, start with the next thing immediately, I just have to kind of avoid Instagram because there's so many pretty things that people are making and there's so many good designers and creators and just you just wanna I wanna make it all, don't you? And I want to buy all the yarn. All of it. But no yarn and no new castles this week. So might be a bit boring for a podcast, but it's good for me. So Fool Us Nude has gotten a bit of love. Um if you didn't watch the last episode, I should probably mention that this is in... Uh, I'm using two yarn qualities here. Uh, one is the Rauma Finul yarn, which is the dark yellow, the black, brown, and the pale yellow. And a and, uh, hand-dyed yarn by Fjord Fibers in the colorway Hytteliv which is kind of a tonal, speckled, variegated, I don't know the proper names on, on hand dyeing things. I just love using them. So I think this is turning very nicely. There's a, bit, there's a way to go yet before this is a finished uh, cow snood, whatever is the term. I'm hoping to have it finished, if not by Easter, then during Easter. So, which I now realize I don't know exactly when it is. <laughs> so, okay, I, I've got some wiggle room, I hope. Um, but yeah, that was kind of quick, wasn't it? So, what else can I mention today? Cold coffee? Hmm. Okay. So, damn. Like many people, I have received a new issue of Pom Pom in the mailbox. And <laughs> it was, it, did I say it was raining and snowing and stormy? So I think this was left in the mailbox for about two days before I went to check it. <laughs> it's got wet. But the pages are not stuck together, and I think that's only due to the the good quality paper they actually use for this publication so so pom pom magazine it is quilt inspired issue yep which like should i start quilting too now no but there are two there are two designs in it which i quite like the look of um the others are a bit meh. <laughs> oh, three. This one's nice. But it's... So, I am feeling the crux. The one that is just like a very simple little cardigan. And all of the stitches on it. 
So that is done in cotton decay, simple decay, and then it's uh, all the stitches are done with yarn scraps, which is nice way to use of that. This one I think could be interesting to make, just because that's a technique I've never done before. This, uh, oh, what's it called? Lucky pieces. I have no idea how this is knitting. Enter luck. Oh yeah, it's enter luck. I've never done enter luck. And it looks really cute. It's got this crosses thing going on. Again, it's, I just love the things that are a bit colorful and you can, you can kind of get away without, with, you don't have to go and buy a, a, a sweater quantity of yarn to make this because it's short sleeve. It uses a variety of colors. So if you have single balls of, of uh, wool and uh, maybe you have two or three balls of the main color and a selection of 25 gram balls of various colors, I think you can make a very cool sweater. Let's see how much they need for this. Oh, nice. See, I just look at something I, and I want to make something new. This is the problem. Stop. <laughs> Stop getting inspired and, uh, and just finish your projects. <laughs> no, it's allowed. We get to cast on new things. It's just that if I get distracted and I cast on a new thing, the old thing gets left lingering for ages and it takes three years to finish a thing or six months to fasten buttons. So, which is silly because these buttons, I, I just fixed them on, it took me 15 minutes now this morning. Why did it take me so long to get out my, my, uh, <laughs> my thread and needle to put the buttons on? Ah, <sighs> things, reasons. So, yeah. I actually don't think I have much more this week. I have not uh, started another amigurumi. I have made a decision on what to make. The colors as well, sort of. And uh, it's just a matter of who gets one first. As I said, there's two two babies in the making that we're waiting for. And um, yeah, Let's see which one pops up first. <laughs> well, you should just make them and then they're ready to go, right? Um, yeah, that, that. Anything else to talk about? No, I haven't made uh, the swatch. I haven't done things. So this week's gonna be a short one. It was mostly about my unst, which I'm really chuffed to have now in my rotation and I was talking about putting bands on the inside but let's be honest once it's in rotation it's probably never going to get fixed so uh, yeah let's see if next time I've managed to put sleeves and pockets on my crochet cardi and if I have there are high likelihood of a new cast on mm. the suspense the suspense what will I cast on Anyways, that's it for today. I'm trying to keep it short and sweet. And um, thank you for tuning in and watching. And I hope to see you next time as well. Bye. <laughs>